Hey guys, how's it going? It's Nathan here from Crypto Nares. Today, I'm going to be bringing you a tutorial on how to actually set yourself up for success when it comes to charting. Alrighty guys, so first things first, let's give you a sense of where everything is on TradingView. Starting with the top left-hand corner here, you're gonna have your BTC USD or whatever financial asset you're looking at at the moment. This is called your symbol search. This is where you can search up your different assets, where on the right-hand side here, it has your different exchanges, indexes, or financial markets. Now, next to your symbol search, you're going to have your different time frames, then your different candlesticks and your candle structures. I highly suggest you don't actually tweak this that much because it can be pretty difficult trading a different strategy based on a different candle structure than what it's intended to. Then next to that, you're going to have your different indicators, metrics, and strategies, your alerts, where you can actually create different price alerts or indicator alerts. And then most importantly, in my opinion, you have a replay function. Okay, now going over here to the right hand side of the screen, you have your undo button to undo any previous actions. You have your different chart layouts here where you can actually save your current chart layouts so that in the future you can actually come back to the preset and you'll have your chart colors save your different indicators and your different actual um, annotations on the screen all saved in one place. Okay, very useful tool, I suggest it. Then, what I like to do is personally, and I use a lot of, is this screenshot or snapshot tool where you can actually save the chart image. You can actually copy the link to the chart. This is how I actually am able to post my charts, typically in Discord, is by using this function. Um, you can also open an image in a new tab and then save it that way if you'd like, just like this. You can just right click and save, or you can just copy the link at the top of the page in order to share it. Okay, so underneath your watch list, you're gonna have your actual price alerts. This is where you have all your active alerts and also those that have actually, you know, previously been stopped. And then underneath that, you're gonna have an actual log of which ones have been recently triggered. This is very useful if you get an alert on your phone and you wanna go check it out, but you kind of forgot what the alert was for. You just come here and you can actually see what has recently been triggered. That way you can actually go to that chart and trade accordingly. Switching back over here to the left-hand side of the screen, you're gonna have your different tools, okay? I'm gonna go over this a bit more in the future, but at the moment, this is where you have all your different annotation tools and also your, your technical analysis tools. I highly suggest taking a bit of time going through, making sure you know where everything is. That way you can streamline your trading process. Alrighty guys, so let's go through the ways to make yourself a more successful trader. And the first thing I like to do and the first thing I recommend you do is to switch to a dark theme. And we all know that from basic physics and whatnot, that darkness is the absence of light, therefore the absence of information. And with this chart as it is, the white background, it can be a lot harder for your brain to differentiate between what the chart is actually showing you and also what the background is showing you. So I like to make the initial switch to a dark theme because that way you can actually identify the patterns a lot more and you can actually see what the candle structure is showing you in more clarity. Now, once I make that switch to the dark theme, the second thing I would like to do and the second thing I recommend is to actually change the chart colors. The reason why is because if you're looking at the chart right now, your eyes are automatically gravitating towards seeing a lot of red on the screen, which is bad for you as a trader because as a trader you need to be impartial to the market direction because if you get influenced easily by what the chart colors are telling you then you allow emotions to actually get the better of you and therefore you tend to lose out on a lot more trades because you're trading with emotion rather than with information. To make the switch to a different color theme you double click on the chart. I generally like to switch my green to white especially in the dark theme because it's just a bit more easier to see that way. And then from red, I like to change it to a more neutral color. In this case, I'm gonna make it blue. I generally don't use blue. I generally use like a dark gray or something like that, but for all intensive purposes, I'm gonna stick with the dark blue at the moment. Alrighty, so now that we've actually removed unconscious bias from the equation, we can now focus on ways to actually make ourselves more efficient when it comes to charting itself. And where I like to start with that is by actually utilizing my favorites toolbar. And this favorites toolbar is very useful because it means that you're able to keep all your favorite and your most frequently used tools as close to you as possible when it comes to charting. And it just makes it a lot more efficient to actually chart and pump out charts left, right, and center. Now, I highly suggest you go through and spend time, whether that be using the replay function or just by actually going back to previous PA and just practice charting and figuring out 
what tools you are using the most frequently. That way you can really streamline and personalize your favorites bar to yourself. What we need to focus on now is optimizing our timeframes and your time frame will be really dependent on the type of trading or trader you want to be. So at the top here, I usually have my weekly, daily, six hour, four hour, one hour and 15 minute time frame. And you may be thinking, oh, wow, that's like literally almost every time frame from your high time frame to your low time frame. And truth be told, I don't even really touch one hour or 15 minutes because I like to do swing trading and a swing trader usually is someone who goes from about the low, sorry, the mid time frames to your high time frames. So for instance, here, it would be from four hour to weekly. That's usually the time frames I like to trade on. I don't really trade on weekly that often. It's only just to get a sense of where price is in terms of the high time frame structure. Um, but if you're looking to do scalp trading, you're going to be really focusing on your lower time frames. So it's sub four hours. Okay. And so I find it's really important for you as whether that be a novice in the space or whatnot, or an intermediate person, someone who's had experience charting and also trading to figure out really what type of trader you want to be. Because if you want to make trading a, for instance, a career, you want to, you want to be doing a more frequent trade. So you would be looking at the lower time frame and you're going to be doing a lot more scalping than you would be doing higher time frame trades. If you have a second job and a full-time job, for instance, and you want to do trading on the side, you're going to be looking more at swing trading. That way you don't have to actually keep watching the market so closely. However, if you want to be an investor and look for your long-term gains, you're going to be looking at your much higher time frame. So you're basically from your daily and above time frame. In saying that, it's really important for you to actually go through favorite the time frames that are reflective of your trading style. Now let's talk about indicators. My rule of thumb is less is more. I highly suggest not being one of those degens and having 10 or 15 different indicators on your chart at once because as a trader, you need to be able to make unbiased and objective decisions based on what the market is telling you. And the more variables you add to it, i.e. more indicators you add to the chart, means that you're going to be overstimulated with information and more often than not, you're going to have conflicting results. So one indicator may show that there's bull, bullish strength, but then another indicator will show that there's bearish strength. And it's all well and good if you only have like three or four indicators, but when you add that up over 10 indicators, you're going to be having so much more conflicting decisions and you won't be able to make an effective trade if you have more indicators. As such, I'm going to quickly go and add my indicators that I personally use. My rule of thumb when it comes to deciding on indicators to use, you need to be able to first identify the trend. Secondly, you need to be able to understand and observe the volume profile of the market. And thirdly, also get an idea of what momentum is telling you. So whether the market's in favor of the bulls or the bears. So let me quickly go ahead and add my indicators to the chart. Alrighty, our next tip is to actually utilize the watch list section. And the way to utilize this to your benefit is by actually using this sectioning tool. And this sectioning tool actually allows you to create different sections in your watch list. For instance, I want to name this crypto and I can add new assets underneath it corresponding to what that list is. So it could be Lunar USD because that's another crypto. I have it under there. And then also, for instance, the way I've used it in the past is to differentiate between my stocks, my main markets, which, which are the markets I check every single day, and then also my large and medium caps. Okay. That's one way to actually really streamline your watch list. You can always create separate watch lists based on traditional crypto markets. If you'd like, I've got some here for like above the 200 EMA and whatnot, but it's all down to personal preference. Now to take this one step further. I highly suggest utilizing these colored ribbons on the side of the assets, okay? This is where personal preference comes into play. You can associate different meanings to different colors. In my sense, I like to use orange for your different markets or for a different market. In this case, it would be my stocks. Um, green are assets which I currently hold positions in. And then red are, for instance, assets which I don't really see any possible entries at all. And what's really useful about using this type of method is because 
if for instance, I need to go through and I see that, you know what, these assets aren't actually showing me much signs of a trend at the moment. So it could be a ranging market. This allows you to get an overlook quickly every day of what the market is telling you. So at the moment, if this was the case, I'd see that SPX is looking like there's no real trade entries to be made. And then all my large caps and whatnot currently aren't in a favorable position either, which means that I, as an investor or a trader, or even a swing trader, um, I shouldn't really be looking to take any positions because the market is in a state of uncertainty. And this is why it's really important to really categorize everything. That way you can actually make those inferences based upon what the market is showing you as a whole. As a trader, it's almost impossible to monitor the entire market at any moment in time, which is to be expected. So the way you get around this is by creating price alerts. And there's two ways to actually create a price alert. You go up here to the left, top left hand corner, press create price alert. Your condition up here is the asset itself, which means that if the asset is at 1840 and I want to create an alert for when the value crosses say $20, I just change the value there to 20 and boom, you get a, on the right axis, you get a little orange tab showing you that this is the level where you have a price alert at. The second way to create a price alert is to go over to the right hand side to your Y axis, press the little plus button that comes up and press add alert. And just like that, you have the exact same situation. However, in this case, let's say I want to create an alert at $22. I'm going to change it there to $22. Okay. And now you have on your Y axis, $22, a price alert. Now to take my alerts to the next level, what I personally like to do is to add my trading plan to my alert. And this is done by, for instance, I want to create another alert here at $22. Let me change that back there to 22. Okay. I shouldn't have pressed enter there, but that's fine. At the bottom here, I can create an alert name. So I'm going to say this is a price alert um, in bracket bullish breakout, bullish breakout, beautiful. And in this message box, what I like to do is to include my trading plan. So in this case, if EMAs have bullishly crossed, i.e. 13 EMA is greater than your 20 and OBV slash RSI are showing bullish strength and favoritism. favoritism. I am definitely not very good at spelling here in this case and favoritism. Then look for a long upon rich retrace to support. Okay. And by doing this, you're allowing yourself to plan ahead with your trades. Thus, you're allowing yourself to take a back seat and wait for these conditions to be met. And once these conditions are met, then you can enter a trade. If they aren't met, then you're not forcing yourself to enter a position. And usually when you force yourself into position, that's when you lose money. As a trader, I believe it's very important then that you utilize these functions to actually create little messages and reminders of your trade ideas based on certain conditions if they're met. The other way to actually do the same thing is actually here on the right hand side underneath the actual asset itself, it says add note. And to add a note, you just press the add note button and then you can actually do the same thing. So if price is above 22 long and that's your bullish idea, you're going to add to the notes or if price is below 18, then short. Now, anytime that you return to this actual asset, so for instance, here on the right hand side, next to the AVAX USD, you can see there's a little note function and you click the asset, you go click on your notes, and then you have two possible trade ideas. And that way you don't have to mentally keep track of what you're trying to discern from the chart. Rather, you have it in a nice, an easy place to interpret on the right hand side on every single chart. Final tip when it comes to making yourself a successful trader is to practice, practice, practice. And the way you do that on TradingView is by using the replay function up here. Okay. I cannot stress it enough. If the market is boring or if it's the weekend and you know that it's wrong to trade on the weekend due to the low volume, and you still want to do something to do with trading and crypto or traditional markets, 
just go back using the replay function and practice trying to discern what's going to happen next with the market. Okay. So by using the replay function, I just selected the pre previous moment in time. Okay. So now you're transported back to this moment in time, which is what this is the 29th of May. I can use these buttons at the bottom to actually play timeout forwardly. Okay. And so for instance, what I can do here is I can say, look, if this support lost, then I'm going to enter a short, for instance, I'm going to wait. Does it happen? Boom. We get a short opportunity here. Let me enter a short. Let me step my stop loss up here above the previous high. And now let's see what happens with price. Do we ever get stopped out? There you go. You get stopped out. Now that you realize, oh shit, this trade didn't work out. Why didn't it work out? This is when you look at your indicators and whatnot as well. And you can look for invalidations. This is where you actually discern from your own strategy where your invalidations have occurred. For me, it would have been a flip over of your EMAs down here at this level. Um, or for instance, OBV breaking out here on this candle above the previous high. Or it could have also been one of these moments where RSI actually crossed bullishly above the 50 mark again. This is how you make yourself the best possible trader you can be by really going back, practicing your skills, identifying where your invalidations are based on your strategy, and then you're able to actually apply it to the current market conditions. As that actually concludes today's tutorial on how to be a more successful trader. In summary, don't forget, reduce as many unwanted biases as possible. Secondly, less is always more. And most importantly, practice, practice, practice.